um, uh, and, and, and explain that Alaska is, is unique in that regard. Uh, one size doesn't fit all across the nation. Our cost of health care is much higher per capita because of the nature of our rural nature of our state. So, but we, we certainly encourage the, um, uh, make, make, them, make sure they were aware of the importance of Medicaid expansion on, uh, on the cure, on um, being able to, the treatment and whatnot, so. Um, Val? Lieutenant Governor. Um, so as Governor Walker mentioned, uh, Medicaid expansion is really a critical um, opportunity for Alaska for all kinds of treatment. Um, over 30,000 Alaskans, uh, as Governor Walker mentioned, um, have enrolled in Medicaid expansion through the end of February. Over uh, $382 million in claims have been paid out uh, for uh, services uh, for folks who are enrolled in Medicaid expansion, and over $22 million uh, have been spent uh, for behavioral health services, including treatment services. The other thing about the Affordable Care Act is it required behavioral health parity so that if you have an insurance plan, um, they are required to cover behavioral health services. We know that um, behavioral health services and the access to detox, to treatment, is a critical, um, is a critical um, opportunity for us to be able to address this epidemic. If I may, uh, Governor, say one other thing. Um, the question earlier about uh, the fiscal note, one of the things that I appreciate so much about the bill is it's really a great opportunity to be able to educate the public, educate families, educate uh, children, and educate providers to really restrict the availability of opioids. In addition to the seven-day limit um, for adults for prescription of opioids, if uh, a young person is being prescribed opioids when maybe they had a wisdom tooth pulled or maybe they had a sports injury, the provider is required to counsel the parents um, about the dangers of opioid, why the prescription is being prescribed, and also the danger of opioid addiction. And um, we're, so we're also preventing uh, the misuse um, of opioids as well. So some of that is just really helping to educate the public, educate families. And I would encourage all of you in Alaska, um, we have all been impacted by, um, by this opioid epidemic. Every one of, of us in this room knows somebody. We're related to somebody. We have some connection to somebody who is struggling with opioid addiction. And I would encourage you that if you think that's not true, I would encourage you to look a little bit harder. Um, because we, uh, it's not like that six degrees of separation. I think it's a little bit closer than that. So uh, be aware of the signs, and um, I really ap applaud uh, Governor Walker's efforts to be able to educate the public so that we don't have people who continue to be, um, who continue to abuse opioids. Can I just Thank you, Commissioner. Follow up and, and ask, is the, is the message to, to Congress and the new presidential administration right now not to repeal the expansion, or if, or, or it's if you choose to repeal the expansion, then you should do it in a way that doesn't harm what we have in place. That's correct. That that is that is has been the message. But I want to follow what Commissioner said about the education part. You know, we've all heard an anecdotal stories. Austin mentioned, uh, asked if there was any particular ones associated with one particular section of the bill um, about uh, it, people that have injuries. Uh, you know, if people have uh, sports injuries or some sort of an accident of some sort, and that sort of begins this this process that uh, they become addicted to opioids. They never intended to, you know, said I want to go out and get addicted to opioids. But we we've all heard heard those stories. It was unintentional. So that's an important piece of, and I'm glad that she, uh, the commissioner mentioned that, is the educational piece, the, the explanation from from the you know from the physician to explain the impacts of of, uh, of opioids and, and and some of the uh, the downsides of that. And and there are other options for or some treatments other, that are non-opioid. So uh, that's really an important part. Uh, and it's, it's not, there's no fiscal note associated with that, but that may be, that could be, turn out to be one of the most important parts of this legislation is that, that educational process that, uh, that goes with it. So I think we want to go to the, uh, to the phones now. Operator, do we have any calls in the queue? Well, there are no questions at this time. Thank you. Uh, Becky, then Andrew. Um, thank you, Governor. Uh, Dean Williams, Commissioner of Corrections. 
there, I'm looking to develop a menu of items. I think to, to use uh, Steel Val's words to say many pathways in terms of recovery. One of the things that we're not doing as much in this state is medically assisted treatment on what I call an intervention or an abstinence model, which says that we will, you know, we're, we're soon going to start probably for the next couple of weeks actually doing Vivitrol shots behind the walls in our department. That has not been done before. And you're all familiar with Vivitrol, it blocks the receptors. It really makes a person go straight for 30 days. And that, doing that behind the walls and then hand out, handing off that person to another provider who can work on outpatient therapy, whether it's 12-step or NA or, or any other options that person might need, and then finding someone in the community to deal with them. Because there's a whole host of people in the community who are really right-minded about this issue, who are ready to go. I meet them every week. And my goal uh, as a commissioner is to support those smaller entities that are doing this work really on the ground right now. How we can help as a department is get the person straightened up, um, you know, detoxed with their first shot behind the wall. So that's the change uh, in terms of, and there's other approaches too that we still want to advance in terms of inpatient, but we really need to advance the outpatient. And that's the thing that I've seen missing inside the department. And that's what we're going, we started and we're going to keep going down that road. Last question, Andy. Andrew Thank you. Kitchenman, Alaska Public Radio Network. Um, at this morning's uh, Senate Majority Press Conference, uh, Senator Von Imhoff said that she understands that there are different efforts that are currently going on in the place, and she wants to uh, she wants to see. I'm paraphrasing. She wants to see that they're well coordinated. Uh, do you have a sense that everything is being well coordinated at this point, and are there any obstacles uh, to improving uh, coordination? Well, I certainly concur with her, her desire that things be coordinated and they not be siloed. And so uh, we are coordinated. That's part of the reason for uh, when we have our, our incident command uh, meeting, ICS system, is for that purpose, is to, to bring different groups together so everybody knows what everybody is doing and whatnot. So I, I, I certainly concur with her, her, her goals and desires. I think she's correct, and uh, we're, we're absolutely working on that. Um, I want to have Andy Jones uh, do a bit of a demonstration on a disposal kit that he has, and so if you could uh, you could do yep. that and explain what you're doing. Thanks, Governor. Andy Jones, Chief of Response for the Department of Health and Social Services. So part of, as part of our uh, comprehensive strategy to address the opioid epidemic, uh, the state of Alaska has uh, been able to get a donation of 25,000 drug disposal bags at this time. This is going to allow communities to safely dispose of uh, 1.2 million prescription drugs in our states. So how it works, this is a biodegradable bag. It allows you to dispense or destroy uh, 45 pills, six ounces of liquids, or six patches. It's very, very simple. You just open the bag. You take your prescription, dump it in the bag, holding it up high, fill the bag, halfway with water, sorry, Governor. <laughs> Close the bag, mix it up, kind of hear it fizzing. There you go. So no longer is drug uh, take back an annual event, but it's something that can actually occur every day. Uh, our Alaskan uh, families, community members can now actually safely dispose of these drug disposal bags and their landfills. It won't hurt their, it won't hurt the water system. It won't, uh, it won't hurt the landfills. Uh, it'll be very clean on our environment. And you can do this within your house. So we'll be working uh, to get these out to the communities. Uh, 10,000 will be going to our 17 public health centers here starting next week. And the other 15,000 will be going to uh, health care facilities, pharmacies, and nonprofits across the state. Thank you, Good. Thank you very much. <coughs> Who's, whose prescription was that? <laughs> <laughs> it was, it was, it was not mine. <laughs> All right, thank you very much. Thank you.